Hi, this is Shad Sluter, and in this video we're going to create a sample that you can follow along with for lab question two for the class at Grand Canyon University called 215 Digital Logic and Design. So we're in week three, and the assignment that we're going to work on is listed right here on your website. It says here, in preparation for project one, we're going to design and implement a function that creates all possible combinations of truth values in a truth table. So for instance, if we had two variables, such as x, y, we would generate a list of pairs that looks like uh, this. Looks like there'd be four rows in the truth table. So false, 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 true, true, false, and true, true. Now you'll also have to be able to summarize in your own words the process that we're going to look at in this video. So 100 to 200 words to tell us what your design is. So I'm going to give you this video to pr bring you part of the way there and then you'll be able to complete it on your own. So I've set up a nice uh, header for the program. It shows my name and class and a little description of what we're going to build here. And then I am going to put some notes on the screen here that tell us about the algorithm and how we would be able to build a truth table. So the key idea that you would have to understand or the breakthrough that makes this work is to recognize that a truth table is just like counting in binary. And so if I were to have three variables, I would have a table that is eight rows long. And so if we started counting 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 7, we would have the same inputs in the binary number system as we would have in a truth table. So if you think of as 1, 1, 1 as the same as true, 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 then you've got yourself a binary counting. So it's upside down. Normally we start counting from 1, 1, 1 down to 0, 0, 0. And so you can reverse that in Python pretty easily. So here's the uh, method we're going to do. It looks like we have five steps. We're going to create a, a variable and figure out the maximum number of rows. So that would be two to the power of however many variables we have. So two variables is two to the power of two, which would be four rows. Three variables will give you eight and so on. You can see it's just the binary power of two counting. And so once we figure out how many rows we're going to do, we're going to then make a for loop and loop through how many times we need to create a row. When we uh, create a row, we're going to first of all generate a binary number. So if we're on loop counter number five, we're going to convert five into a binary format. So we'll get a 101. And then once we have a number that is binary format, uh, you'll notice we're going to have to do some padding because the uh, Python programming language doesn't put the leading zeros in automatically. So in these first four rows, you notice we start counting with zeros. And so we'll have to figure out how to pad numbers. So I'll show you how to do that. Also, we're going to convert them into a true or a false, depends on the, uh, the number that we generate here. So I think I'll probably take you up as far as number four and let you complete it. Once you've figured out what your uh, binary number is and you have it converted into true false statements, then you build a list. So let's get started here with figuring out how we can do this algorithm. So I'm going to create a variable and call it uh, variables list. And we'll give it a bracket. So it's like uh, we're going to use the inputs A and B. And let's just try another one with C for now because we want to test it out with three rows or three variables. Okay, so now we're going to uh, figure out how long our list is. So I'm going to call it the uh, variable called number of rows, how about? So to figure out the length of this list, we're going to use the LEN keyword, which is the word length. So, and you can see the note here, it says return the number of items in a container. And so the container we're looking for is variables uh, list. Okay, so in this case, it would show the number of uh, items and this would be three but we don't want to have three rows we want to have eight so we need to do the exponent now you might be tempted to type in caret to the power of two which uh, in most math classes would work however that's a different function in Python what you're looking for for exponents is the double star doubles and turns into an exponent 
And so let's just uh, let's just test that. We're going to print this and say uh, the number of rows will be, and then I'm going to use a placeholder and the end of the string, and I'm going to say format, and I'm going to say number of rows is my uh, variable. Okay, so that will get us started here. Let's save this. So if you haven't named it yet, make sure you have a file name, and then run it. So you can see I have a strange thing going on here. So I don't want to have nine rows. I'm going to have one less than nine. I'm looking for the magic number in this to be eight. So let's save it and try it again. And this time it says the number will be eight. And let's put in another variable. Let's put in the letter um, D this time. And let's see if our number increases. So the number of rows will be 15 now. So that's good. So it looks like we're doing the exponential counting. So we got the first part taken care of. So now I want to start counting. So I'm going to use the for loop. I'm going to just use the variable i for my counter. In, um, and I want to do a range of numbers. So range is the um, keyword we're looking for. And then the length or the number of items that we're going to loop through. So the number of rows is what I want to print. And let's see, just to test it out, let's do a print i and see what happens. So I save it and run it again. And we get ourselves a number 0 through 14. So it looks to me like we have 15 rows. I don't actually want to make that. Uh, I want to go 0 through 16 or 0 through 15. There we go. So now I have 16 total. Okay, so now I have a number for each row. I want to represent that as a binary number. So let's print out another item. And I'll say that the binary number for this is, and we'll fill it in. Okay, so this will get us partway there. Let's run it and see what happens. And you can see that it is going to tell me the binary number for zero is, and then let's take this guy out. So I'm going to delete that and run it again. There we go. This is more like what I'm looking for. Okay, so my sentence says uh, I want the binary number for 0, 1, and 2. Now I'm going to add another placeholder and inside the format command put a comma. And this time I'm going to use the bin shortcut, which is a, um, a function that will tell you the binary number of whatever decimal number you put in there. So it should say... Uh, the binary now. Let's see what happens. I run this again and you can see that it is printing out binary numbers. It's converting it for us. It's a little odd. It says 0b as a prefix for all of the numbers. So I really don't want that prefix there so I'm going to go into this part where it says bin and I am going to put in a bracket and a number 2 and a colon. So what that means is start at the second character and work all the way to the end. So leaving this empty means unlimited length and it, will, it should do the effect of chopping off the first two letters of this number. So you can see I took off the 0b. So I'm getting closer. Now I have all these numbers that are rented in binary. Okay, so now I want to uh, add on the leading zeros. You can see I've got the numbers printed correctly, but uh, put on padding for zeros. It's called Z fill. So I'm going to put a dot. Z fill is the command. And then inside here, I tell it how many numbers I want to pad before it. So like if I put in here the number 15, and we did a run again, you can see that it puts in lots of leading zeros. So we're getting closer. So I want to be able to figure out by calculations what the Z fill is. So it's probably not 15. 15 is awful long. So in our case, we're looking at uh, four. So we're going to have a width of four total columns that we're going to work with. So how do we calculate that? Well, first of all, we have the number of rows. So we'll start with that. We know that there's going to be uh, 16 rows in this thing. So let's go with the number of rows. So we want to calculate the binary of that. So let's put a bin around it. 
and uh, we don't like to have that front end of the B0 so we're going to use this take the first two characters off and now we're going to turn that into a string let's say let's go with str and then finally on the outside of that we're going to calculate the length of the string so lots of functions nested inside each other so we're going to calculate the binary number of the biggest row figure out what it looks like without the two letters at the front then convert it to a string so we can count the letters and finally we're going to assign that to a variable and we'll call this thing the widest uh, widest number we'll call it in the table so that gives us a little bit of idea of what that number of padding will have to be let's just print that to make sure we got the right number coming out here so we'll say we need the widest uh, number in the table so I'm gonna save that and run it to check to see if we got anything so it says the widest number in the table is five well we know it's not gonna be five we're looking for a four so I must be off by one so 5 would make sense if it were counting up to the number 16, because a 16 would be 1 followed by four zeros. Well, our largest number is actually 15, so I made a mistake in which one I wanted to calculate. I'm going to go back to the widest number in the table formula. I'm going to take away 1 from the number of rows, save that. So now it says here the widest number in the table will be four digits which indeed matches down here. So, instead of 15, we can now set the padding to be exactly the number in our table. So the widest uh, number in the table. And let's save that and run it. And let's see what happens. Now our padding matches exactly what we want to do. So we have four zeros, then leading of three zeros, and so on. Okay, so, this is testing out our ability to create binary numbers with leading zero format. So now, I'm going to leave the rest of it to you. Uh, we're going to have to convert these into a true or false. So I'll, I'll give you a hint for how this might work. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, instead of printing this, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a uh, variable called current number, and that is going to be listed like that. Actually, we'll call it current binary number, so that way we know what kind of a thing we're working with. So you're going to have to go through each number in the string. So that's going to be another for loop. Let's call this one for letter in, and then you're going to have to go with a string of current binary number. And let's see what we could do there. So we could say print a letter. Save that and run it. What kind of a thing are we going to get now? Oops, it looks like I forgot to take off a parentheses. So now you can see that as we go through it prints each one of these on a line separately. So instead of printing it your job is, we're going to say, if it is a zero, then convert it into a false statement. And then if it is a one, we're going to convert that into a true statement. And then attach, or we're going to call that append, right? Append to the list of uh, items. So when we're done, we're going to have a list that looks like this up here, true and false, and so on. One more thing that might be important, and then I'm done here. And uh, if we wanted to count from the top down, we can say uh, we can say reverse here, and that will count from 16 or 15 down to zero. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. This is some work left undone, but it will get you started on the ability to create a binary list of numbers, and then it's just a matter of doing strings to convert them into trues and falses. So good luck. Thank you.